Well, hello everybody. I've got a Midland 77285 sitting here that I've been working on, and I actually did make uh, start making a video about it, but the um, uh, problem is is that my camera seems to only want to make 20 minute videos and I was showing the various things that I was doing to it and I don't know how to put the videos together from the camera I hell with it I'll just do another one um, this is the uh, faceplate of it it's uh, got a nice uh, LCD and all that kind of good stuff so it's a somewhat newer radio even though it's not exactly uh, the newest kind of thing you can get out there uh, a lot of the uh, backlight bulbs for the display were out and uh, I have to get some of these uh, little T1 lamps. They have these little uh, colored lenses over them. These ones are orange um, in this case. And I've got all the little bulbs out um, that I have yet to get, but I can't seem to find very many of them unless I get them from like DigiKey. But I like getting stuff from Element 14 because uh, it takes me, you know, roughly a day to get it. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to probably get them from DigiKey. Um, you know, I think that uh, Element 14 should try to sort that out because they do have them. They're just UK stock, and well, it costs twenty dollars, you know, to get to to get it shipped from uh, from the UK, and for you know eighty cent uh, you know lamp, but it's, it's not worth it. So you know, I like getting stuff from them, but you know, half the uh, LEDs and lamps and uh, seven segment displays and other kinds of displays they stock in the UK and they don't seem to stock any in the United States it, it just seems so counterintuitive to me you know stock them in both places so I don't know what I don't know what what's going on with that why that seems to be an issue for me that everything every time I find you know after an hour of sifting through data sheets for exactly what I want for a particular project Oh, well, it's UK stock, you know. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, that's uh, it's not very helpful, you know. And, and, and to, you know, charge $20 for it, uh, you know, per item, mind you. So if I get lamps and then I get uh, a seven-segment displays, each one of those items is $20. So for, you know, $7 worth of parts, i got to pay them $40. It's not, it's not economical to stock the damn things in both places. Anyways, uh, the problems I had with this radio is uh, there will be is a nasty squeal when you um, when you first turned on the radio, uh, and it got worse the louder the volume more you know turn up the volume and it would squeal louder. You could hear the regular receive, but it would it would squeal and then it would settle down after the radio warmed up. So uh, that ends up being a couple of bad uh, bad capacitors, uh, a 470 and a, and a thousand. Um, you know, and uh, what I've got here, I don't know if this is really gonna work. I don't. I mean, I can see it in the in the camera. It's not. Uh, it's not the best. So uh, here's the thousand. Uh, so if we, you know, we take a look at the thousand, eh, four oh five. That's not really that good. Four twelve, what have you. It, it's it's clearly. Uh, seen better days and uh, I didn't think that the 470 was that bad but this was actually the culprit because I replaced the thousand first and then do it and this one was the culprit and uh, it's sort of surprising because I didn't think it was all that far out 246 I mean yeah it's definitely out but uh, you know it's it, it, it's not they're not it wasn't as bad as the, like the thou eh, maybe it was I guess they're both about 50% out so uh, you know that's uh, that, they're both needed replacement so I replaced both of them uh, let me unplug this so that I can uh, flip it around easy get this microphone out um, there's the display uh, the lamps obviously go on each side of that and it goes around the the buttons um, and behind the display there's a light pipe so just have to get some bulbs and we'll be good to go had no output no uh, no RF output it turned out to be this guy here uh, bad, uh, bad output transistor and I've since replaced it the thing uh, that's so interesting about that is this radio got so hot that uh, 
when I had it sitting here the first time I was fiddling around with it, I had just got my wisdom teeth out and I was just trying to keep myself preoccupied with something, you know, while uh, the painkillers were working. And uh, I had it sitting here like this and I put my hand around the back of the radio like this and basically burned the fingerprints off of these two fingers. Uh, it was so hot and I was on painkiller so it really didn't hurt that much. It hurt later of course because I actually got a, a, a fair burn on there. But the, uh, the output transistor that's, uh, that's down in here, can't really see that, it's not very, uh, not very good light, but uh, this guy here uh, had uh, not gone shorted but uh, Basically, uh, you know, for illustration, let's see, we take a uh, take a measurement here. So this is um, a collector emitter uh, right here, 49 ohms, and uh, collector base, 44 ohms. I mean, it was basically just turned into a resistor. So um, you know, that was uh, that was pretty much all she wrote, and uh, I have put it on this uh, this uh, component analyzer just for giggles to see what it tells me. I mean, it's effectively, uh, you know, curtains. There's uh, there's no doubt about that. Just curious to see what this tells me. Short circuit. It just it just says it's shorted, but uh, you know, uh, it's reading you know 40 ohms, 40 50 ohms. Uh, so this thing was getting incredibly hot. And uh, that's why I uh, that's why I took a burn from it, just not realizing because I wasn't looking at the time uh, as to uh, what was going on with this transmit. I didn't even uh, uh, really care about that at the moment, other than when I turned it on and it was doing its squeal. So that's what I was really concentrating on. So I'm flipping it around and mucking around with it until I put my hand back there and yeah, sizzle. Uh, didn't feel very good. So. Uh, that said, a um, couple of things that have been done to this. Um, there's a switch that's been put here, and this is obviously a mod, but this is a power mod. This isn't a channel mod. The channel mod is just, you know, move, uh, move a jumper up uh, across pads up in the, up in the uh, microcontroller up there. But um, this switch is for, for a power mod. This radio had a uh, relatively interesting way of, uh, uh, of allowing the... Uh, the power to be increased and that was there's this um, cross connect wire that uh, they used for this and it goes up around here. I'm not too sure I like the routing of the wire how it goes over the output transistor and get an RF that's going down into the microcontroller and this thing's beeping and stop beeping um, and uh, I'm not sure I like that I'll probably move it but then again, we got the audio. I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I guess I'm just not a fan of it. But it does control the output power, um, and that leads me to a answer for somebody who asked me this question, and uh, I actually think it's a reasonable question to ask. So I'll answer that, um, and that is why do some of these radios get cooler when uh, when they turn up the power? Well, there's a very simple answer to that, uh, and this radio is a good illustration of that. There's a voltage regulator here that's also part of its, uh, in this case, this has an audio, a modulation transformer, but a lot of radios don't. Um, this one's got a, a modulation transformer, um, and these, are, incidentally, these are the two caps I replaced, just didn't point that out earlier. But if I was to, um, to plug this in and uh, spin this around so that we can see that, I guess uh, I guess you can see that. And uh, plug all this in and uh, trying to figure out a way to explain this that uh, you know it's easy for the layperson. I know a lot of people that probably look at this will probably just uh, I understand what's going on, but if we measure the voltage there, that's going to the output transistor, you can see that there's 13.8 volts going to the output transistor. And it doesn't change when I flip the switch back there because it's not transmitting right now. But if I transmit, 
you see it drops down to 8 volts. So if I flip the switch up, which is a high power mode, it drops down to only 11.6. So, you know, we don't have the voltage, quite the voltage drop across that regulator. And because of that, uh, it's not converting that excess uh, voltage into heat because that's basically what's going on there. You have a voltage drop and the more substantial the drop is across that regulator, the more heat it's going to dissipate. So it runs a lot cooler when it's in high power mode because it's not dissipating all that heat. It's not trying to you know, keep that voltage down. So that's why they get, they seem to be cooler. Um, now this output transistor, incidentally, which was a 2SC2078, and I've replaced it with a 2SC1969 because number one, I didn't have any of these, and the second reason is I've probably got a hundred 2SC1969s, uh, literally, uh, in a bag up, up above, you know, along with some other, you know, rare transistors because when they were discontinuing them, I bought up as many of them as I could. So I just have tons of them. Um, you know, in, in the event that I ever really got into, you know, working on this stuff full time, which right now I'm just sort of mucking around, I'm getting them, you know, on the cheap and, uh, uh, you know, maybe I'll put some of them up on, on eBay, you know, just to get something out of it. But most of the time, mostly here, I'm just, you know, fiddling around and I'm having a little bit of fun doing it. So, you know, maybe somebody gets a little bit of an education uh, for me videoing it as well. So I replaced it. Um, the sill pad on the back of it was so, um, uh, it had gotten so scorched from it that it pretty much stuck to the transistor and if you pull it off it was just, it just coming apart it, and I, so I had to put another, another sill pad, uh, replace that one back there and, uh, I've got, uh, these guys right here which are pretty much all you need to, uh, to replace that. So, um, that's pretty much it, other than replacing these lamps on the front display and uh, you know going and uh, making sure all is well with it because uh, it does receive just fine. And incidentally, now that I've replaced those capacitors, but if I put the radio back on here and I transmit um, with the switch down because I've got it oriented, the switch down is its low power mode. Uh, at least that's how they've got this modded. Uh, which, incidentally, to high power mode is literally just bridge across a uh, a, a, pad, a couple of pads that they got there, and they just ran it to a switch. But that's that's its high power mode. Just bridge a couple of uh, bridge over a uh, you know zero ohm resistor over a uh, o over a pad or something. So if I transmit low power mode, it's four watts. Um, hello, hello, hello. And it sounds relatively good. This the stock microphone is kind of iffy. If you listen to it, you hear you hear all that crackling that it does, and yeah, it's it's not the best. So this isn't the microphone that I would want to use ideally if I was going to use this radio because you're going to have all that noise going on with it. But it's the stock microphone, and you know it's it's going to be sort of chintzy. But other than that, it sounds really good. It's not. Uh, not over modulated and I looked at it on a scope we're not we're not clipping you know we're not clipping half the waveform or anything like that and that is because and I know I've talked about this before somebody went and lifted up a resistor in here in the uh, ALC circuit which of course made the radio too damn loud there's a control for it so what you can do is you can just turn it up on using the control and not go and cut the damn circuit out. I don't know why people do that, and that's probably what led to the demise of the output. And uh, It's just not a good idea, guys. Just don't do it. It doesn't make any friggin' sense to me why they insist on making the radio so loud that it's unintelligible. And that was the first thing that I encountered when I replaced the output transistor. Looking at it on a scope, the thing is, it's clipped. It's got a flat top to it because it's so loud. So... That said, uh, I put that, soldered that resistor back down. At least they just lifted it up. You know, they just pulled pulled one of the legs out of it and they left it there. So I just stuck it back through and soldered it and turned the control up and we're good. So um, that said, when uh, when it's in the low power mode, it's four watts. Uh, and if I flip the switch, 
it's uh, eh, about 11 watts. And the hum is from the lights, incidentally. Uh, if I turn off all the lights, there'll be no hum. So uh, that's not why uh, there's a hum there. I've got another radio up above that's uh, on the same channel. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. And when I talk, it modulates, and on this uh, somewhat crappy uh, old watt meter that I've got over here, uh, 11 to, you know, and it moves between 11 and it goes to maybe 17, 18 watts. Um, so it's not over modulated. It sounds good. Uh, it's got a lot of punch to it, a lot of power. Uh, I'm actually quite shocked that this radio uh, is doing so well in the uh, power output department. But, uh, you know, hey, I really can't complain. It works quite well. Uh, but of course, that's after it got some TLC. Um, not to say that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, that other people can't do the same, but hey, it's, uh, it's working quite well. Uh, I'm very happy with that. So, as long as it's in the high power mode, the regulator doesn't quite get so hot. But in low power mode, obviously it's going to dissipate more heat. So, uh, that's, uh, that's why they get hotter when they're in a lower power mode. So... I don't know, hope that was uh, that was helpful. So other than that, as soon as I get some lamps for the display, put it all together, and uh, you know, it'd be a good working radio. Incidentally, it has the uh, channel mods already done, and I think it's the channel 19 button that does it, which would be the third button over. Yeah, so there's an arrow, probably can't see it on the, on the camera because there's no backlight. There's an arrow that's, uh, that's up, and down and then there's no arrow and that's the CB channels and then uh, the up arrow is uh, like 27 415 through um, you know add uh, I guess what is it 27 8 something or other uh, no maybe 28 megahertz somewhere up there. just add add uh, you know 100 kilohertz I guess it is times 40 and that's pretty much where you're gonna end up and the same for down below down below 26 965 just step down from there so you know it's got the extra channels so the rate it's effectively uh, you know uh, three sets of 40 channels and uh, you know it's got some uh, some good some good output power it sounds really good it's not distorted it's not squealing I receive anymore um, so hey uh, I think that that's going to turn out really well um, you know so once again don't cut any parts out. It just sounds bad. Uh, take care of them. Uh, obviously, uh, make sure that uh, that whoever's going to work on these sorts of things at least has a, some of, somewhat of a clue. Because um, I've, I've I've gotten questions from people I know that are asking me about some of that stuff. Like, you know, what's uh, you know what's the deal with uh, with people that just go in and start cutting parts out of the radios? Well, I can't really answer for them. So. Um, turned out pretty good. Sorry I wasn't able to video actually uh, repairing it, but these capacitors were sort of a dog to get out because this is a double-sided board and the vias were, you know, the vias fill up with solder and it, it was just a pain to get it all, get the, get the, uh, get the pads clear and get the vias all cleared out so that I could put the components back through the board. So, Two capacitors and a uh, transistor and some lamps and uh, fully functional uh, Midland 77285, which I'm I'm quite impressed with it. It sounds good. It's got a lot of power. Hey, I mean you really can't beat it. Um, this is one of those radios that came into the market pretty much when I got out of all this stuff. So uh, it's a new radio to me, um, and uh, you know seems to be a good radio. Uh, it's remarkably similar to the Cherokee that I've got the bad modulation transformer on. It, it, it's it's shockingly similar. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the manufacturer, whoever made this, made that. I'm drawing some parallels there. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put some get some lamps somewhere, put the lamps in, put it all together, figure out what to do with it. Um, hope that was interesting, and, uh, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves.